having sung praise to God, let's come before God in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, we turn our thoughts to you again this day, aware that we are unable to meet together, unable to know the joy and blessing of gathering as your people to publicly worship you. Yet we praise you for your graciousness, your goodness to us, that allows us to have an online service to watch. We thank you that even as we continue in lockdown, you are faithful to us. Your presence is with us day after day. You've promised never to leave us nor forsake us, and we know that that is true to this very day. As we take this time now to focus our thoughts on you, as we come to worship you in our homes, continue to be with us, we ask. We come to you with different experiences and different lives lived this week. Some are mourning, some are worried, some are anxious, some are frustrated, others are joyful. Some are in need of your comfort, while some need to be caught, to hear the call to greater love and obedience in your name. As we come to you today, we offer our lives to you and ask you to meet us wherever we find ourselves spiritually, emotionally and physically. And as we come, we confess our sins and our sinfulness before you. We say sorry for those things we have thought and done which dishonour you. We ask for your forgiveness because we know that sin hinders our fellowship with you. And so only through your forgiveness can we know the fullness of our salvation. Only in forgiveness can we experience the joy of the Lord which we know is our strength. And so that is what we ask for now as we come to you. Coming in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. For another week we use these words from David as an assurance of pardon. David writes, I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgive me the guilt of my sin. If we confess our sins to God, then we can be sure and certain because God has promised in his word that we are forgiven. So God's people, confess your sins freely to God this day and know his forgiveness and his pardon. Amen and thanks be to God. Our lectionary reading this week is continuing on in Genesis. It's Genesis chapter 14 verses 1 to 12. So if you have a Bible there, do turn to Genesis chapter 14. And I'll read the first 12 verses. At this time, Armaphel, king of Shinar, Arioch, king of Elisar, Kedor La Laomer, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of Guim, went to war against Bera, king of Sodom, Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Sinab, king of Adma, Senaber, king of Zebuim, and the king of Bela, that is Zoar. All these latter kings joined forces in the valley of Sidim, the Salt Sea. For twelve years they had been subject to Kedor Laomer, but in the thirteenth year they rebelled. In the fourteenth year, Kedor Laomer and the kings allied with him went out and defeated the Rephamites in Asheroth Kerim, the Zuzites in Ham, and the Emites in Sheva Kirathim, and the Horites in the hill country of Zir, as far as El Paran near the desert. Then they turned back and went to En Mishpat, that is Kadesh, and they conquered the whole territory of the Amalekites, as well as the Amorites who were living in Hazazon Tamar. Then the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adma, the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is Suar, marched out and drew up their battle lines in the valley of Sidim against Kedor Laomer, king of El Elam, Tidal, king of Go Goim, Amraphel, Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Arioch, king of Elazar. Four kings against five. When the valley of Sidim was full of tar pits, and when the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, some of the men fell into them, and the rest fled to the hills. The four kings seized all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all their food. Then they went away. They also carried off Abram's nephew Lot, and his possessions, since he was living in Sodom. We thank God for his word as we continue to read through Genesis. Amen. Boys and girls, I want to talk to you for uh, a little minute or two. Um, I don't know if you recognise who this is on the front of this book. It's Fireman Sam. This is actually a book of Fireman Sam I had when I was younger. Uh, and now my kids enjoy reading it too. The story is called A Spot of Bother. And in it, one of the characters in Fireman Sam 
naughty Norman Price. There he is there, Norman Price. Norman Price does something naughty, which is what he does. So two of the other characters, Elvis and Trevor, two firemen are, are out for a run. And Norman sees him coming. And what does Norman do? He turns the signpost around so that Elvis and Trevor run in the wrong direction. They think they're running back to Ponty Pandy, but instead they're getting further away from Ponty Pandy. And then eventually they get tired and they have to sit down and the story goes on. But what Norman was doing is a bit like what we're going to read in um, John and think about in John in a few minutes time. Norman is taking a signpost and turning it so that it's not pointing in the direction that it should. The signpost is still there. He didn't take a signpost away. He just changed it. And we're going to see Jesus in these verses that we're going to read in a few minutes. Jesus coming to the temple in Jerusalem. The temple in Jerusalem was meant to be a big signpost to God. And the fact that God is to be worshipped and that God offers forgiveness to those who come to him and say sorry for their sins. But Jesus comes into the temple, into the temple courts and clears them of people. People are trying to sell animals, they're trying to exchange money. And Jesus clears them out of the temple courts because they're doing something that they're not meant to. They're make, taking something that is meant to be a signpost to God and they're twisting it and turning it and making it something that it's not so that people don't see God there. They see extortion and they see people ripping them off and they only see how far short of God they fall. Jesus comes along in what we're about to read and say, I am actually the true temple. I am the one who points to God. I am the one where you will find forgiveness. I am the one who will make you right with God. Jesus is the true signpost to God. In fact, he is God himself. He replaces the temple in Jerusalem and he says that he is the temple in these verses. So we think about Norman, we think about him taking a signpost and turning it to somewhere where it shouldn't be pointing, which is the same as the temple. But Jesus is the one who points us in the right way. We're going to sing about Jesus being the way, the truth and the life. Now the song we tried to sing last week and the video didn't work, but hopefully this week it'll work. So the next video that comes on will be, I am the way, the truth and the life.